curried squash soup with roasted seeds. It is a balanced, delicious curry soup finished with coconut milk for a sweet, rounded out finish. It's delicious, it's warming, it's perfect for fall. You're gonna love it, let's make it. Squash soup already is a really easy, quick weeknight soup to put together. It's also super seasonal, but sometimes it's nice to switch it up, add a little bit different flavor profile if you can. And that's what this one's all about. It's using curry flavor as the base, which I'm gonna use a curry powder, a blend that's already done in a spice bottle that you just purchased at any grocery store. And then we're gonna make sure to amplify that flavor by adding a couple other spices and also some fresh ginger. And it's gonna start with a good base. Any soup to me starts with a good base. And this one's gonna start with onion and carrot. Now carrot seems like an odd one maybe for a soup like this. One, the color is to me perfect, but more so carrot has that great kind of inherent sweetness that we all know, but also just a slight vegetal flavor. And I know it sounds like obvious because, well duh, carrot's a vegetable. But there's something about that underlying tone and when you layer it into a soup like this, which is gonna be blended in the end so you won't know it's there. It has just a nuanced flavor that has layers to it and that's what's important. So what we're gonna do is take over the onion and then the carrot that we have chopped. I have some butter that's in a saucepan already that we're gonna build the whole soup in. And the reason I do butter is it has more of a richer round, rounded out flavor in the end. I think that's important to remember is oil doesn't necessarily add a lot of flavor, but this butter is going to really have this beautiful flavor it's adding to it. So we're gonna let these saute for a while and then build on that. While that's sauteing, we can get the, the squash ready. So sometimes these feel like people's menaces menace in the you know winter and fall because it seems like awkward and hard to kind of pull apart but honestly they're pretty simple what's going to help is a sharp knife if you don't have a sharp knife you're probably going to damage yourself if you have a sharp knife you should be able to cut through it fairly quickly i like to cut through and then cut it in half and then i peel each half separately i just find for me that is what kind of works best but when we cut down the center you're going to see uh all that beautiful flesh inside that's the point of squash now i personally find I don't know if you've ever, if you happen to have a grapefruit spoon, maybe you think, what's a grapefruit spoon? They have all these little tines on them, all these little pricklies, and that to me works perfect to get into any squash and just be able to nicely, see how easy that works around, and you can just beautifully get out that center. Now, seeds, of course, you can roast up separately, so you can save the seeds, but look how nicely that just opens it up and keeps it completely clean. And then what I do is I just take my peeler, and I peel each half. Now you could peel the whole thing if you want to at first. The reason in this I'm peeling is while when I roast it, I like the peel. I think it adds some great texture. For a soup, it can kind of sometimes add a gritty texture or a grainy texture, and I don't want that. So I am gonna peel it for the soup, but this just gets it all ready. So I'll peel them, chop them up, then we'll move on to garlic. So once the squash is all broken down, peeled and everything, I just slice it into big chunks. I mean, you don't have to be perfect here because guess what? It's gonna be a blended soup. So the bigger thing is just so it cooks somewhat evenly and that's why I'm just slicing it up. But you can see it's not in perfect pieces at all. It's in irregular kind of size chunks and pieces and that to me is the beauty of it is that it doesn't have to be perfect. So to me squash soups, they're super easy, they're super forgiving, which is the best part, and they can take on lots of different flavor profiles, and they give it a nice consistency and thickness from the squash. So I have a couple garlic cloves that I have chopped up already. We add garlic at the end of something that has sauteed. It's important to do these steps and these levels. This has sauteed, so it's already gained some flavor. It's softened, but not colored. We're gonna add the garlic now because you don't want it to get a burned flavor, and garlic, if it cooks too long and at too high a temperature, it can actually get that burn flavor. But then once we add everything else, it will mellow in and instantly, so it's just been a few seconds and already I'm smelling that garlic. Just that warmth, it hits it and it smells amazing. So what I do wanna make sure to do is salt it. I didn't do this in the beginning, but you know, layering salt in as you're cooking as opposed to at the end. If you just put it in at the end of the soup, it sits on top. If you layer it, it just is seasoned well. So that's why you wanna make sure to salt at all these different places. So I have that in there and now the spices. I like to bloom the spices in the fat I'm using, which is the butter in this case. So we have, bloom just means to kind of open them up, kind of get them to bring their essential oils out. So curry is one of the most important ones I'm starting with. And you can see I'm using a yellow curry powder. Curry is a blend of spices and it smells so fragrant and warm and I just love that. And to amp it up, I wanna add a little bit more cumin. 
Now, cumin is usually in curry already, but I like to amp that up a little bit. It can be a strong one, but just a little bit more to me goes a long way. And then a little bit of red pepper flake. I think it needs a little bit of hit of, just a little hit of spice. You can do more, you can do less, you can do none, but I think it needs some. We're gonna stir that in and let those bloom. So I've been stirring it and it just, oh, the intensity of the wonderful aroma from the curry, from that cumin, it really opens up and it just smells good. So I wanna add some fresh ginger now. And again, this is just upping the flavors that are there, but I think grating it right in. I actually grew ginger this year. It was kind of a new endeavor because in my zone, it doesn't usually grow that well, but uh, it did pretty well in a container for me outside. So I'm putting that right in and just grating it right into it so it can kind of just melt. You see it falling right there? And when you do it right over the pot like this, any of those residual juices, they fall in also, and that's what I like. So we have that in there, and now we can throw in all of our squash. So we have that chopped up already, you'll remember, and it's, it's quite a pile of it. So we can start putting it in, but this is really the point of the soup. We have squash. Those flavors are what are really gonna enhance that squash and give it just like that beautiful warming quality, and that to me is what's important. Now along with this squash, you'll see that I had an apple. An apple is super important to me because again, remember what we did with the carrot? We added in a carrot. An apple does some of the same things. It adds some sweetness, but it also adds some great flavor. That kind of sweet, tangy, tart apple, that's what you want going on here. Now, you can see in this case, I am leaving that peel on, and that's because apple peel is super thin, and I think it actually helps the texture of the soup. And I just like a crisp, sweet apple. So if it's one you like to eat, you're gonna like it in your soup. We're not baking with it. We want it to break down. When we blend everything, it's gonna become unnoticeable what it was. So you just want a good flavored apple. And just chunked up, you can see that's all it is. Now we can just take this over, throw it in. Now the important part is adding some liquid, because at the moment this is very heavy on all the other things. So we're gonna put in our chicken stock. And you could do a vegetable stock, you could leave the butter out and do a vegetable stock, and that would be just as good. But we're gonna throw that in there. We're gonna bring this to a simmer and keep it at a simmer until it's all cooked through, and then we're just gonna blend it up. While that's simmering, if you remember, we had the two halves of those seeds. And I do wanna save them, because I think it can, one, just be a good snack, but it's also kind of a nice topping for the soup if you want it to be. And just taking those seeds, and you can roast them. So we often don't think about that, but we can roast all these seeds and take them out. They don't look like the normal pumpkin seeds you buy in a grocery store, but those are a certain type of pepita or pumpkin seed. These are just squash seeds, but they still have the same flavor. They have great texture to them. I wanna watch my soup and make sure I turn it down so it doesn't boil over. And now what I wanna do that I have them all separated from that pith is take them all and just put them on a parchment lined baking sheet. You can see how simple it is. And then put a little bit of oil on them. Just a little bit, because that's gonna help flavor. And then I like to just squish them in that oil, spread them out somewhat evenly. It doesn't have to be perfect, but this is how, you know, it's these things is one, I like to think lower waste. Why not? But then also, it just is delicious. So if you can do both things, why not? And especially after I go to the work of growing the squash, I wanna be able to use all of it. So I'm gonna put some curry powder on them just to kind of enhance the same flavors that we're using in the soup. I'm gonna sprinkle on the curry. It will have that same idea, a little bit of a different crunch to it as it bakes in the oven, roasts up. And then of course it needs some salt. So you need to definitely put some salt on. That's gonna actually season them. And that's gonna be a great kind of crunchy, salty topping to the soup. So we're gonna put that all over. And now, I'm just gonna put them right into an oven. So we're gonna let those roast up. In that time, the soup most likely will be simmering away beautifully on the stove and we'll have a meal. This has been simmering away and in that time, you can see the seeds got done. How you know they're done is they start popping in the oven, making a little noise and you can taste one. Oh, they're good. They just have a great taste. They're really simple. They, you can't really see a difference but you can just tell that they have a crispy, crunchy exterior. So the soup has been simmering, and how you know when that's done is, look, you want things just to like take up to the edge something, and then just like mash it. See how it just it meets no resistance and just mashes? The apples should do that, the carrots should do that, and then you know it's ready to blend. Because now we're gonna blend it, because let's be honest, the soup doesn't look great to eat like it is. It's a blended soup, and it gets a better thickness and 
viscosity. So what we're gonna do is just take an immersion blender. You can use a stand blender, whatever you have that works, and start blending. Let's just make sure it doesn't go everywhere when we do it too. So you can see now it's all finished up. You just wanna go until it's smooth. And this is what's beautiful is the soup becomes so much more, uh, it's more, I think, better looking than it was before because of that beautiful texture. I mean, just look at that texture. Actually, as it cools, it actually firms up a bit more. So to finish this off, I always add coconut milk. And I like the full fat coconut milk because guys, life is short, have the full fat. That's where all the flavor is. And you really want that flavor because it balances out that curry we put in there, adds a little bit of that coconut sweetness that is so good. And when you stir it in, if your coconut milk usually becomes separated, you get the, the cream on it, it will melt in here too. So I'm just stirring it into it and you can see, uh, if you guys were here, the smell already, it's more balanced. Instead of like a strong curry flavor, you get a sweet curry flavor and just the aroma of it. That's what I love. It smells so good. So we can now serve it up. <laughs> That's the point of this, people. It's to eat. It's to put food on the table. I always say that with my recipes. It's all about just putting food on the table. But look how beautiful that is. Now, I love a few of these seeds. I just think you need a few on there. It adds texture. And then I have some red pepper. I like to put on top some spicy. I just think that's really delicious. It, I like the spice. I think curry can call for spice, especially when you put that coconut in there. But then it's all about just making sure it tastes good. Mm. It tastes delicious. I love it. It's really well balanced. It has that, that I think it needs the coconut at the end to balance everything out and not make anything too harsh, too strong. It mellows everything into a really beautiful aroma. You get the curry in there and it's a nice curry because we intensified it with the cumin, with the ginger. We brought that up. We added a little bit of spice under there and then you get the sweetness of the squash, the star of the show. That's amped up with the apple, with the carrot, but you don't know it because you don't even notice it's in there anymore. And then the coconut brings it all together. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you get excited, inspired for fall, for autumn, for the flavors we have, for the ingredients we have coming in, if not from your garden, from a market, from a nearby market maybe, to enjoy. So share this video around so others can get excited too because if this guy can do it, anybody can do it. And guess what? make a big batch, freeze it. Freeze it in individual containers. You can eat on it whenever you want it. That's the best part of this. It freezes beautifully. Check my website, wiseguide.com, for this recipe and all my other recipes. They're all on there. Till next time, enjoy something delicious. That's the point.